now it's time for the only show that doesn't care about ratings, Witness Radio, with your host, Ryan Muniak. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Witness Radio, the only show that doesn't care about ratings, because our sole purpose is to save souls. On purpose. Go to witnesstalkradio.org for more episodes and syndication options. Share your thoughts through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Periscope, or call 513-900-8070. 2016. How fast you've gone. This year has almost come to an end, but... Before we look forward to the new year, let's look behind us at some memorable moments from 2016. As for me and my family, we've seen the addition of another child. We've seen our children grow physically and mentally, learning an amazingly vast amount of knowledge. My wife and I have drawn closer to one another and our love has deepened greatly. We've grown in our spiritual walk as the Lord continues to sanctify us through the power of the Holy Spirit. 2016 has also seen many blessings come upon our ministry endeavors. Witness Radio aired 43 episodes with topics ranging from the Black Lives Matter rallies and transgenderism to false religions and the death of Leonard Spock Nimoy. We've been blessed to welcome numerous guests on the show this year, like Ray Comfort, Paul Washer, and Eric Hovind. Now, outside of the radio, the Muniac family has been involved in over 50 different outreaches, six conferences, including the Martyr Rayo Academy. We've fed tons of people through meals and other goodies, helped the homeless, led two semesters of Bible study on the college campus, coordinated Financial Peace University, and well, quite a bit more. You're listening to Witness Radio. Whatever they've grown up believing is what they're going to think is right, and they can say that someone else's views are wrong, but that doesn't mean that another person's going to be like, okay, hey, yeah, well, my view is definitely right, yours is definitely wrong, but it's just what you believe in, what makes you, you. Okay, so then there is, uh, according to what I'm hearing here, there, there's really no wrong answer in your religious beliefs. You can believe whatever, and you'll still get to heaven or eternal bliss or whatever. If, if that's what you believe, you follow that, you will, yeah. I mean, I just think it's it, if it's your beliefs, I'm not going to say that you're wrong. I'm not going to put you down. I don't know. Okay. What if I were to tell you that... I am a uh, dressitarian, and I worship the uh, almighty black and blue, white and gold, color-changing dress. That is my God. Would I be right, or would I be wrong? If you deeply believe that, then you can be right. I, I mean, if, I mean... Come on, that's nonsense. Who worships a dress, aside from all those people in Hollywood? Worship the weirdest things. I mean, the most strangest, but to them it's normal. So if that's your norm, that's your norm. All right, so uh, Jamie, right? Yep. Jamie, what, what are your religious beliefs? What do you believe? Well, um, I am a Christian, so... <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to call you out. I don't, I don't think you are. I mean, okay, that's cool with you. What what makes you a Christian? Um, I grew up going to a Christian church, heard all those beliefs, and that's what I believe. So that's what I believe. I mean, okay. Uh, well, now I'm also a Christian, and the Bible doesn't say that you have to go to church to be a Christian or. Just grow up in a Christian home. And the things through going to church is what I'm saying. Going to my Christian church, I learned the beliefs and views, and that's what I believe. So I didn't say that going to church made me a Christian. The things I learned and the way that I live my life due to the things that I learned there is what I believe. So. Gotcha. Okay, the Bible says that's not how you get to heaven either. So I'm actually good at doing a few preachers as well. <laughs> okay, wonderful. I mean, doing Ray Comfort's voice is fun. Oh, you, you got to give us some Ray Comfort. Well, I like to do um, Ray Comfort maybe doing the I, – I, I did a Ray Comfort uh, thing doing the good person test with Barack Obama. <laughs> so, so I was like, hey, uh, Barack, let me ask you a couple of questions. How many lies have you told in your life? 
and you think you're a good person. He's like, uh, let me be clear. Uh, am I a good person? Uh, well, uh, my popular, my ratings popularity says uh, that I'm a good person. And uh, I, I thought uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger doing the good person test would be fun. If you're like, how, how many lies have you told uh, Arnie? You'd be like, yeah, but doesn't matter because they were all true lies. Come on, don't be ridiculous, Rick. Come on, <laughs> Ray, Ray's a fun one to do. Um, so do a little bit of. Uh, I, I like to do a bit of easy from the comfort zone. Welcome back to the comfort zone with easy. And uh, he's got a very high pitched voice. I like that. Right? I just need to learn how to rap. And uh, and I don't know if you've um, ever interviewed Todd Todd Friel, but he's he's a fun one to do because he kind of sounds like a cartoon character himself <laughs> with his um, voice like this. Wretched Radio. My name is Todd Friel. Uh, wretched, like the song says, that kind of voice, right? Something like that. <laughs> he's got a crazy, he's a great voice. It, it he's like that every time you meet him. Just, yeah, it's just, I think, is he putting it on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I know you interviewed Paul Washer. I did I did a little bit of his voice as well. Because I, I, I think he's a great, I love his messages. And uh, I wouldn't want to disrespect him too much at all. But uh, I, I thought, I wonder if he has the same passion when he preaches when he's reading not just from the bible but reading like a bedtime story to his children whether he's like the three little pigs and one had a house made of straw it was like chaff that the wind blew away it's just true <laughs> so now what are some other uh celebrity voices or, or or popular voices that you do that that people who aren't in the christian world might know one of the popular ones is Owen Wilson, which, uh, yeah, people love hearing Owen Wilson. Yeah, I love Owen Wilson because he's talking about, you know, they say we only use 10% of our brains. I think we only use 10% of our hearts. Wow. Yeah. Just wow all the time. I love that. He could, The guy could do Shakespeare and be like, is that a dagger I see before me? Wow. Yeah. It's neat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and um, Dr. Phil. Oh, he's another Texan. I did a little bit of his voice before, but I like Dr. Phil. What were you thinking? Are you crazy? Crazier than a run over dog. And I love how he, um, all these Texan sayings, you're familiar with all the Texan sayings he uses, like, uh, we're, we're talking to this guy. He's so ugly, even the tide wouldn't take him out. You know what I'm saying? Get real. <laughs> More confused than a cow on AstroTurf. Um, I don't know if you know, Bear Grylls is a very popular one. Bear Grylls from Man vs. Wild, and we're surviving out in the jungles of Sumatra. And when you're out here, you need loads of food for survival, vitamins and protein, and I always carry them packed in a can of alphabet soup. And you don't want to drop it on the ground or it could spell disaster. <laughs> Everything's crazy like that. I'd like to try and make you backslide from being an atheist. Is that okay with you? You can try. How many blades of grass are on McMicken Hall's lawn? A lot. An exact number. Do you have an exact number for me? Uh, I can make one up, but no. no. Okay. So, those were preliminary questions. Now, here's the big question. Knowing that you don't know everything, in the amount of knowledge that you do not know... Is there a possibility that God could exist? I would say that there is a possibility. There's a possibility for anything. Okay. So then, in actuality, you would say uh, not that there is no God, but you believe that there is no God based on the knowledge that you currently have. Yes, that's correct. There, that, that's not to say if there was um, undeniable proof or whatnot that I could come, come out with and I... I just couldn't, like, God comes down and smacks me in the face. But I don't, have, I don't have any proof, so I can't really come to the conclusion. So, ultimately, you don't know. Ultimately, yes. Then you're an agnostic. I wouldn't say that. Let me uh, try one more thing with you. Uh, I'm going to try and help you to see that there is a creator, okay? So now we're, we're here on the campus and we're surrounded by all these extravagant looking buildings, you know, great architecture and everything. How do you know that there was 
an architect or a builder for these buildings? They exist. Okay, good. Next question. Uh, we're standing on a uh, wonderful brick road with uh, uh, very specific bricks. They're uh, almost like triangles. They're kind of... Uh, There's a name for the shape, but I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. It, it, it's almost like three hexagons put together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how do you know that there was a road maker or a road designer? It, we're standing on it. It exists. Okay. So now look around at everything in the world that was not created by human hands. You, me, the grass, the trees, the sky, the moon, the sun, the planets. How do you know that nothing created them. Nothing didn't create them. I believe that they came out of the, the early birth of the universe through the different... the creation After the creation of stars, after the stars came out of all the energy, they created the atoms from their fission and their fusion. And then those atoms eventually... There's a bunch of nebulae and stuff out there still, just clouds of giant dust, essentially. And the... Over the um, unsurmountable of time, of bel- billions and billions of years, this stuff all came together with the natural forces of gravity and the universe that we know, and it slowly came together. That's a great answer, um, but it leaves me with one question. What came before the energy that made all of that? I wish I could tell you. That'd be great. That'd be, that'd be awesome to know. It's just one of those things we don't know, because... Uh, how we uh, our un- current understanding of time it, that brings us back to the Big Bang is it brings us right back to that that that's where the time as we know it began. Not to say there wasn't something before that we just couldn't comprehend, or there's something after this universe. If it eventually were to die or something, maybe it's not as infinite as we we we'd so believe. We just don't know at the moment. And we, but with what we do know, that's what I, I, I draw conclusions from. So, do you think that? it's possible that everything was created by God or a creator? I'd say it is within the realm of possibility, but I don't believe it would make sense. Because hmm. well, the, the, reason, the reason I ask is because to, to say that you know, these buildings were created by a builder and this street was created by a, a, a road maker and then to say that things that are so much more intricate like you and me were created by chance random processes it, it's kind of illogical it, it doesn't really make sense why do you uh, say that that makes sense whereas if I were to say this building just happened over millions of years or this road was laid down exactly the way it is with all these intricate bricks it happened all by itself by chance random processes you would think I was crazy you're against abortion right I'm definitely against abortion Abortion. okay good so basically you're against the murder of children that's what that's the logic why are you wasting everyone's time here then when black people are getting murdered making this protest but you're trying to save lives by being against abortion it just makes no sense why are you pro death penalty when you're against murder of children it just it literally makes no sense why are you supporting gay people killing themselves because of your logic it just makes no sense you guys are supporting murder but you're against the right to my own body I just don't get it at all yeah so Cheyenne has a great question I'll get to you next sir stand in the box and I'll get you to you next okay respect Cheyenne so Cheyenne's question was because I am abortion or I'm sorry because I am against abortion uh, Cheyenne feels that I am against women's health or her choice now that's a misconception that a lot of people have about Christians no, and people. That's pe- a misconception. But, You're well, telling me what to do with my body. My turn, then your turn, okay? Yeah, my turn, then your turn. You ask the question, I'm answering. Okay, so listen. Her, the misconception is that I am against a woman's choice because I am against abortion. That is not true. I am all for a woman's choice to choose her health provider, 
I am all for a woman's choice to uh, whether or not she does something with her body. What I am against is the murder of unborn children. You see, what is inside of a pregnant woman's body is another body, so it's not hers. It is another body, and we've learned that that is the truth from these Planned Parenthood videos, which have come out and showed that Planned Parenthood sells body parts for a profit. Now, ma'am, are those body parts your body? Or are those body parts another body? Um, actually, I worked for Planned Parenthood two summers ago, and so I don't know why you're anti-Planned Parenthood. I met people who were raped and who became pregnant from their rape, which was not their choice, okay? They didn't choose to have that body part inside of theirs. That was a violation of their rights, and that's what I worked with, people who experienced that. Then they were pregnant, and they didn't want that body part inside of them as well. So they chose to get rid of it. I don't understand how you could possibly be against somebody not having a child that they didn't choose to have when they were violently assaulted. Okay, Cheyenne, that's a good point that you brought up. Uh, You didn't answer my question, though. What's your question? My question was, was when an abortion happens... And Planned Parenthood pulls the body parts out, and they sell those body parts for a profit. Are those body parts part of? What are you talking about? Part of your body or part of the baby's body? When they sell what body parts? Okay. There's lots of videos and news reports about Planned Parenthood selling the body parts of aborted babies. What body parts are you talking about? Uh, blood, hearts, livers. What? Are you kidding me? Where did you see that? You saw a video of body parts of babies being sold? Just 40 years ago, every state in the U.S. outlawed homosexuality, not just marriage, but homosexuality in general. What happened to change so many attitudes so quickly? Hollywood's very powerful. When I say Hollywood, I mean the entertainment industry. That's music, videos, TV, uh, movies. And they Hollywood attracts a certain type of people. They're usually proud, usually uh, uh, good-looking, want to be in front of the camera, want to praise the man, want to be rich and famous, um, very egotistical and, and, and admit it. Uh, and they're not the sort of people that gravitate towards the humility of Christianity. So within Hollywood, we have a group of people who are out, who have been in the past out of step with the average American who goes to church, God, and country, etc. But because of the continual um, bombardment of their uh, uh, godless philosophy through the entertainment industry, you've seen a whole generation change in 40 years. We have a generation that's ignorant of the history of homosexuality, and suddenly that which has been immoral in the past is trendy and even celebrated. And uh, the only way to stop this scenario is for the gospel. You know, we we can't boycott anymore. I mean, there's so many huge Microsoft and and Apple and and Home Depot, all these huge Nike, all these huge companies have become pro-gay. Why do we boycott the lot? End up boycotting oxygen. You know, we we just it's and petitions. We've had enough petitions. Politics, well, yeah, it's good to be involved in politics, but we've been doing it for 40 years. So now we get around every four years thinking we're going to get good guys in there. And what we've got to do is go back to the Book of Acts and say, well, what did the church do? Do they try and change the Roman government? No, they preach the gospel because when you change a person's heart, you change what they desire. Instead of drinking in it, like water, they, just, they seek after righteousness. So the way to bring America back to where it should be is with the gospel of salvation to see people transform and change, given a new heart, a new desire, that love the things that God loves. You see, that's the thing with, you know, the Bible. It says everybody deserves to go to hell, but making sure we're in context and we're not cherry-picking, it also says how you can escape hell, even though you deserve it, I deserve it, everybody deserves it. It says how you can escape it. That's why Jesus came. It says that Jesus was perfect, that he never did anything wrong, never lied, never stole, never did any of those things. And then he went to the cross, he died on the cross as a sacrifice for you and for me. 
Not because he deserved to die, but because we deserve to die. We deserve to go to hell. We deserve to be punished for our sins. But Jesus paid our fine. He paid, took our punishment upon himself when he died on that cross he paid for your sins and for my sins regardless of what the sin is sin is equal in God's eyes and he said you know he says all people deserve to go to hell but I have made a way for you to be free from hell to escape hell and that's why Jesus came he died on that cross and then he rose three days later from the grave that's where the loving part comes in in, in, in the Bible is that God loves you so much that he was willing to send his son to die to take your place so that you wouldn't have to go to hell but there is a catch to it Jesus said that you need to repent and believe the gospel not not go to confessional not uh, say five Hail Marys and whatnot, um, not bow to Mecca or anything like that uh, not doing good works you know it, he said you need to turn from your sinfulness your sinful desire we're all born with a sinful nature ever since Adam and Eve and it's uh, he says turn from that sinful desire and put your trust in Jesus Christ put your faith in him and what he did on that cross and you're saved you're going to heaven and in fact, let me open this up real quick, and then I'll get your thoughts. Going back to that uh, 1 Corinthians verse. So we read 9 and 10. Would you read verse 11 for me? And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. We have that list of sinners, of people who deserve to go to hell. Uh, much like myself, I'm, I'm in that list. But it says, you can be washed clean. Your sins can be wiped away by the blood of Jesus Christ if you're willing to turn from your sinful nature and put your trust in Jesus Christ. So what are your thoughts on that, Bree? First, I'm going to say I wish every Christian believed the way you do and realized that we're not, no one's any better than the other person. So I thank you. For being that person would you say that it's loving of me to to share that with you knowing that I don't want you to go to hell regardless of sin yeah and the reason I say that is because out of the many Christians who could be here at pride you have to be the most loving person I've met here and I don't even know you sir but you are the most loving person for being here and patiently listening to me should we divide over secondary issues or should we consider someone a Christian or a non-Christian because they don't agree with us regarding end times or Calvinism or any other secondary non-fundamental issue of Christianity? Well, that's, of course, a very complex question, but uh, just a few things I'll say about it. Number one is that if we know that someone is truly Christian, that is, they've truly been born again, they truly love the Lord, then we may sit down with them and, and have disagreements over certain things, maybe even strong disagreements, but at the same time be willing to die for that person, to love that person, to serve that person. And when, when we talk about division, I mean real division, what we're saying is that that other person's not a Christian. And we need to be very, very careful about that kind of thing. Now, when we talk about fundamentals, this is very, very important. For example, I would not uh, divide with a person, break fellowship with a person, or something like that, because I'm more Calvinistic and they're more Arminian. I wouldn't rail against their ministry or anything like that. But here's something that I would do. If I saw someone out there, whether they were Calvinist or Arminian, and they were just superficially leading people in prayers. Pray this prayer. You're saved. Don't worry about it. That's it. That's all. You, you bought the tickets. You're going to heaven. Everything like that. Now, I would divide over that. That's not an issue of Calvinism or Arminianism. It's, it's an issue of the gospel. 
hold it, you're you're leading people into a false profession just because they prayed that prayer with you. You're claiming that they're saved now. There's no studying of fruit. There's no, there's no ongoing with the Lord and things like that. So with me, you know, eschatology is extremely important. But when I look in church history, I see that some of the godliest men that everyone recognizes are godly men. They They differed. So who am I to say, you know, that this is the way, and if you don't follow this way, that you're not Christian? That would be absurd. Yet at the same time, if we're talking about justification of faith, or the deity of Jesus Christ, I can say this is the way, and if you don't follow this, you're not Christian. Because those are fundamentals of the faith. But here's what we need to understand. I remember years ago, there, I was in Peru, and some people were uh, some people were saying, "Ah, oh, Paul Washer's charismatic." Can you believe it? They were calling me charismatic, and I said, "Well, you know." So I went to them. I said, "You know, why are you missionaries? Why are you saying this?" And they said, "Well, you're going over to this Assemblies of God church, and you're teaching." And it wasn't really Assemblies of God. It was just sort of a, it wasn't anything non-denominational. But they did, you know, do some charismatic things, very charismatic things. And they said, you're going over there. So, so you're, you know, you're ecumenical. You're this, you're that. And I said, listen to me. I said, uh, these people have come down from the mountains of Peru because of the war. They've come down as refugees because of their faith in Christ. They were being persecuted and all kinds of things. Now, they differ with me in some certain issues, not not on the deity of Christ or salvation by faith or anything else. They differ with me with some some what I would consider secondary issues. Now, they've never been instructed, they've never been taught, and they've asked me to come and teach them more fully to understand the way of Christ. Then I asked them this question. I said, now, if if some drunk, wife-beating pedophile from across the city, if I went to that person to witness to them, God-hating, wife-beating pedophile, and I went to that person and I witnessed to him and tried to show him the truth, what would you men say about me? And they said, well, we'd say you're you know, doing the work of an evangelist. You're doing, that's what we should be doing. And I said, but, but I go across the city to try to help a group of Christians who have come down from the mountains because they're persecuted for the cause of Christ. And now you're saying I'm doing something wrong and sinful just because they disagree with me on a few issues? Do you see how crazy that can get? You see, what we got to realize is that we have, we're to love our enemies. So, so we most definitely ought to be loving a brother who may differ with us on some issues. But if we can say with all good conscience, Christ died for this person. This person has trusted in Christ. They are a child of God. Then I'm bound to them. And I'm bound to help them. And if we continue in disagreement, I'm not going to hide my disagreement. I'm going to tell them, I disagree with you. I think you're wrong here. Yet at the same time, I'll take a bullet for them. Or if they're hungry, I will give them food. Or if they're naked, I will give them clothing. You see, if they're in prison, I will visit them. So it's it's a balance. But even when we have the strongest disagreement with people, we still ought to demonstrate love. You're listening to When This Radio. Did I miss one of your favorite moments from this past year? Call 513-900-8070 and let me know about it. So now that we've looked behind us, what's in store for the future? Well, the Muniac family plans to work on more episodes of Witness Radio, more Bible studies at the University of Cincinnati, more outreaches, more conferences, and more training in biblical truth. We're also busy planning and working on a new studio, a new radio show, a new gospel video series, new ministry endeavors to orphans and elderly people, and many new resources to help you grow in the faith. We're also praying that God would open the door for us to begin full-time missionary work here in the United States of America. But no matter what happens, May God be glorified in 2016. If you enjoyed this episode of Witness Radio, please like it and share it with others. And until next year, the fields are ripe for the harvest. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and share the gospel. May God bless you. Witness Radio has been brought to you by the Muniac family.